to some of you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, what was the graph? And it was like, find, oh, it was, you want the average numbers. Uh, the, the, the x values are given? Yeah. And what is the y? What is the expression or the function? So it was um, p plus x over 2 equals 33, and you have to plug in, no, it was weird. Okay, so p plus x over 2 equals 33, the mass, okay, can I read it? Yeah. Okay. So there is a problem that says, the accompanying bar graph shows the percentage of adults in a certain city who smoked cigarettes for selected years 1970 to 2010. So we have p plus x divided by 2 equals 33, describes the percentage p, so P is the percentage of adults who smoke cigarettes X years after 1970. So if X, if X is the number of years since 1970 and P is percentage of, percentage of adults who smoke cigarettes, use this information to answer questions A and B below. Does the mathematical model underestimate or overestimate the percentage of adults who smoked cigarettes in 2010? And by how much? Select the correct choice. Very good. So we are asked to determine the percentage in 2010. Awesome. Very good example. Thank you for bringing that. Good. So first of all, this is an equation. Is it linear? Okay, let's go back here for a second. I would say it is it's just in standard form. Like Was this a linear equation? It had a variable y and a variable x, both of them at power 1, no products of variables and no variable in the denominator. Correct? Yeah. Okay, so let's come back here now. Is this a linear equation? So p is a basically y. And x is x, right? So in order to determine the percentage, first of all, I will do what to this equation? Negative for x. Put p on its end. Right. Awesome. So p equals negative x over 2 plus 33, correct? I'm moving this term to the other side. Of course, I can write it as negative 1 half times x. is the same thing. That's the coefficient of x. It doesn't really matter right now. So we're asked to find the percentage when x represents 2... 2010. I have to read very carefully. When we have a problem of any sort, of any kind, we have to read it carefully. It says here that x is the number of years since 1970. X is 40. Exactly. So I have to plug in x equals 40 in this particular linear equation. So when I plug in 40, what do I get? So P will equal, plus yes, 40 divided by 2 will be 20, right, with minus okay. in front, so it will be 13. 13 what? Awesome. Because remember, the measurement unit is very important, and we know that P is in percentage. So now we have to look at your chart, if I could show it uh, in the camera so that there is everyone to see. Okay. So there are one, two, three, four, five bars. We have to locate 2010. At the top of the bar, there is a number, and we have to see whether that number is 13. If it is 15, what will I say about this equation? So Does it oh, exactly? It underestimates. What if this one is 10 and our answer is 13? The equation is overestimating. Right. So now let's look. Awesome problem. Thank you. So now let's look what does the number say? It says 10 percent on the chart. It's nice. Okay. So if that is the actual, this is the actual. This is an equation that 
kind of models the situation. It's not perfect. So this is the actual, this is what we get using the equation that the mathematicians came up with for the model. So what do we say about the equation? First of all, it's not perfect, definitely. Does it overestimate or underestimate? Over. over. By how much? 3%. Awesome. Awesome problem. Thank you. This is a very interesting application of a linear equation. Perfect. Does it have a positive slope or a negative slope? Do you expect the trend to go down or go up? Down. Right. Because the slope is negative. the coefficient in front of x. That's why I wrote it like this. Because I was thinking of asking you about that. Awesome. Good. Next. Tom, do you remember your problem? Uh, uh, AJ helped me out with that, actually. Okay, then. Uh, and, and I was just trying to... I love it when I don't have to do anything. <laughs> You're Good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything else? Is there anything else you worked on? Other questions for me? Nothing else? Everything else is clear? Okay, then. So let's move on in that case. We have not reviewed rational equations, so that's where we are right now. Finishing up 1.2. So let's look at a rational equation. I'm looking at 46. On page 120, rational equations. 5 divided by x plus 2 plus 3 divided by x minus 2 equals 12 divided by x plus 2 times x minus 2. I recommend the following method. Of course, I accept other methods, the book's method or your method or somebody else's method, as long as it's clear and legitimate. OK, how do I know that this is a rational equation? How did I know here that this was a linear? Remember? Two variables, both the power And no products of variables and no variables in the denominator. Awesome. So why, how do I know that this is a rational equation? There are no irrational numbers? Uh, no. Mm. The, actually, the equation can have an irrational, can have the square of 7. Don't, don't write it, I'm going to delete it. It can have this, and that's irrational. So it doesn't, uh, doesn't make the equation uh, irrational in any way. Okay, I'm going to er erase that. So how do I know that this is a rational equation? Because it has a at least one fraction, fraction, and it has what in the denominator? Variables. Exactly. So an equation will not be rational. You can say, this is rational. No, because it doesn't have x in the denominator. And I can write it like this. And this is just a number times x. So this is not rational. It doesn't have x or the variable in the denominator. But this one does. That's the reason why this is a rational equation. Good. Um, what do we know about dividing numbers? Let me give you a few examples. Uh, let's say a 5 divided by 0. Uh, let's say, correct, 1 divided by 5 or 0 divided by 10. Okay, very good. How do we know that this is undefined? Do we all know that? Yes? Any questions? Okay. So how much is 1 divided by 5? This is it. 0.2. 1 divided by 5. How much is this? Zero. Right. Awesome. So I do have a concern whenever I solve rational equations. And what is my concern? Dividing by 0. Awesome. So from here... In order for this, for this fraction to exist, I have to write a restriction or a condition on x. x cannot be just everything. Negative awesome. Do we all agree with x not equal negative 2? Yeah. Any questions? Please don't be shy. If one of your colleagues answers, it doesn't mean that you should, be, um, you should prevent yourself or restrain, restrain yourself from asking a question. Do we understand how we got this? x plus 2 equals 0 means x equals negative 2. Thank you. 
So what about this one? I also have to have a restriction for x. Exactly. And of course, these two have the same conditions. So these are what we call restrictions on x. Very important. Your book does not require you to write restrictions on x. I highly recommend it. I accept other methods, but I highly recommend and you'll see in a minute why. Good. Here's my first step. This is my first step. My second step, I prefer moving this term to the other side. So I rewrite the equation as 5 over x plus 2 plus 3 over x minus 2. And what happens now when I move a term from one side to the other? Negative. Very good. Awesome. Negative 12 divided by x plus 2, x minus 2 equals? If, awesome. Thank you. There was a part B in that problem. I, I forgot. There was a part B. In this one? Yeah. Oh, no, it was going to choose A or B. Oh, it just says choose A and B. It was not, it, it was didn't have to. Oh, okay, so that, will, that is done then? Yeah. Okay, sorry. It just hit me. It said something about A and B. Okay, good. So now, I need to find the least common denominator. Can anyone give us, notice what I, again, I'm not, I will never claim that my method is the method or the best one or the only one. No. But look what I do. I drew a long fraction line, I copy the equal symbol, and I write zero. Because if I forget this and I continue to simplify, I will never solve. I will change the equation into an expression. So I know some of my weaknesses, not all of them. Uh, so in order not to forget, I write the equal symbol and zero before I even find the least common denominator. I recommend that if you're like me. So, um, least common denominator. Yes, indeed. All different factors have to be in the least common denominator. Very good. Awesome. Good. So now, do not write this. I'm giving a horrible example of what can happen. Do we agree with this? No. Of course not. What is wrong here? I multiplied, I took the liberty to multiply x plus 2 in the denominator by x minus 2, I have to do the same thing to the top. So I'm writing myself a note. This is not a fraction line or anything. It's just It just reminds me, look, remember you multiplied x plus 2 by x minus 2? You have to do the same thing to the top. Uh, x minus 2 was multiplied by x plus 2 to get this. I'm writing myself a reminder. I have to multiply by x plus 2, the numerator. Now, what do I multiply 12 by? It has the same thing. I don't even have to write anything. I just wanted to discuss this with you. But you don't have to write the 1. Okay, so now, of course, I'm going to have to eliminate this and come back and write x plus 2 and x minus 2. And now, please tell me how to, what to write for the top. Five times x minus two. Correct. I want to show some, something else that I, I'd like to uh, avoid. And I'll tell you why. It is a legitimate method. So this, I'm not going to do this. Is this correct? Yes, of course it is. The reason why I'm not going to do it is I bet there is at least one student who would be tempted to do this. And that would be a horrible mistake. Instead of doing this, I multiply all the, all the way, meaning I distribute 5 to, to x and I write 5x. I distribute 5 to negative 2 and I write negative 10. I distribute 3 to x, there is a plus in front. I distribute 3 to 2, so I get a 6. And then minus 1 times 12, which is negative 12. In the hope that at this stage, when somebody says sees this, will not be tempted to simplify anything. Again, I'm not saying that this is wrong. As long as you don't start crossing terms, it's fine. You can go ahead and proceed. Because from here, you will get this. Because you will distribute, right? Good. So it's up to you. I'm just 
telling you why I don't write that. Good, so now we do what? What is the next step? Very good, so I have 5x plus 3x, which is 8x. And I have this negative 22 plus 6, which is negative 16. x plus 2, x minus 2. Zero. Yes, would you allow me to write 0 as 0 over 1? Yes. Because 5 can be rewritten as 5 over 1. Technically, anything divided by 1 is itself. So. Exactly. Now, how do we call this? I just need a, another terminology here. Because okay. we're, yes, so how do we, this is still a rational equation, but it has a very special name. Tom? Okay, I'll well, start. I, I don't remember the name, but I know that you can, I know you can divide both by two. That's true, but I, I won't do that right Actually, now. Actually, No, it's, it's called, and this is a very important name. Very good. It is a proportion. Why is this so important? Why is this name so important? Because only in a proportion I can do what? And only in a proportion. Divide by two. No. No. So first of all, why is it a proportion? A fraction, equal symbol, and another fraction. If I have this, this is no longer a proportion. So fraction equals another fraction. What can I do in a proportion and only in a proportion? The thing is just gross, right? I didn't. I didn't write it yet. Uh, I meant the A over B equals C over D. Yes, that's a proportion. But what can I do in a proportion? An idea. I'm going to work with these. <clears throat> Almost compressed water. Yes. So please remember that only in a proportion, if this is true, this will be true. Mandatory. That makes it so much easier. So what did I do really? I changed this rational equation into a proportion. And now what do you think I'm going to do? Yes, thank you. And please tell me what to write. Awesome. Now we run into a problem here. What exactly? Because you add 16 to both sides, you get 8x equals 16. Divide that to both sides by 8, and you got x equals 2, which is no good. Yep. Can't That's the reason why we wrote these from the get-go. So what do I conclude? about this equation. It's not true. It's called a contradiction, but how many solutions does it have? None. Exactly. Contradiction. It's called a contradiction. It has no solutions. Very good. Any questions for me? Any questions on rational equations? Any questions on rational? Yes, please. I'm sorry. Uh, instead of when you combine like all uh, three separate um, numbers, which is one like long among the uh, here. Division, yeah, yeah. How were you able to do that? Because uh, one was x plus two, something over x plus two, something over x plus x minus two. We combine it all together into one long uh, fraction. Good. So let's say I have to add one half to one third. What is the least common denominator? Six. Good. So 2 was multiplied by? 3. 3 was multiplied by? 3 times 1 plus 2 times 1. I see. Okay. It's the exact same method. Okay. I get that. But this is much easier because it has no variables in it. Right. But it's the exact same thing, exact same steps. That's why I said when I wrote here, this would be terrible. I have to make the necessary adjustments for the top of each fraction. Because if I don't, this will not give me the answer. So once I choose what they need based on what they have in the denominator and based on the resulting least common denominator, then I know that this one needs 
5 needs to be multiplied by x minus 2, 3 needs to be multiplied by x plus 2. And this is all based basically on this. But it looks so much more sophisticated. Thank you for your question. Very good. Anything else? Anything else? Yes? OK, we're moving on then. Quadratic equations, 1.5. This so far should all be review. I, I'm sure the previous course, um, I don't know. I teach O11 o and O12, but they are going away. So I'm not really sure about um, what exactly step by step is taught in uh, 36, O36, and O37. I have not ta taught them first uh, yet. So I don't know. But any, any course that allows you to get into this class should have had rational equations, linear equations, graphing, and quadratic equations. Okay? But let's, let's look. There are four methods of solving quadratic equations. Four methods. First of all, can anyone give us an example of a quadratic equation before we go into those methods? Yes, please. Uh, x squared plus x plus concept. Awesome. This is a quadratic equation. Equals zero. Very good. Okay, in general, we have, we write ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Where a, b, and c are real numbers. I claim that a cannot be zero, though. B and C can be zero, but A cannot be zero. Can anyone explain why? The exponent. No. Nope. If, if you have zero times A. No, A is zero. A is zero, then zero times A. Then I, I remember somehow it just, it just makes everything else not work. Because. No. Nope. Well, OK, let's see what happens. If this is 0, what is left? Exactly. That's the correct answer. It becomes linear. So then, then we're not talking about the quadratic equation anymore. Right? Make sense? Yep. Perfect. OK. So we have four methods. So let's list them. I know you're probably thinking, OK, really? Do I really need four methods? The answer is. I would say yes and no. I will have no for number three, but I will have yes for the other three, for number one and two and four. Number one is factoring. In my opinion, factoring is not absolutely mandatory, but this is just an opinion. Because there, there is something else in here that I'm going to list in a minute that is or can bypass factoring. But factoring is useful if it takes you this much to factor and solve an equation. If it takes 10 minutes, factoring is not useful. So we can bypass this. I truly believe it's a, it's a tool. I truly believe it's a skill. So we should learn it. But it can be bypassed in general. Number two. Second method is taking square roots. Taking square roots is a very useful method for many, many, many reasons. Very useful method. Method number three, completing the square. No, it's not a useful method. It's not useful, first of all, because it does not solve the quadratic equation. Once we complete the square, we have to come back and apply this method. So this alone is not useful. Um, it is a very important method, however, for something else. So we start by talking about it here in this class. And in the previous class, I'm, I'm sure you heard about it. But it's not a useful method when it comes to solving quadratic equations. 
And the last one is extremely important, very useful, quadratic formula. I would like to illustrate a few things, a few, um, uh, illustrate the fa factoring method with um, a few problems. And of course, I will let you choose them if you want. And if you have the handout that I gave you on factoring, I'll show you in a moment which one I'm referring to. And I do have, um, I did make copies for you. I remember last time I did not have, no, no, not in this class. I'm sorry, not, not in this class, forgive me. So I'm talking about this handout that comes with this. This that comes with this. And then I would like uh, to illustrate with simplifying by factoring um, any of these exercises that you would like to look at. Okay. How are we on factoring? Because maybe we don't need this. Maybe we are strong enough on factoring and we don't have to spend time on factoring. Do you feel like going through any examples from factoring? Solving quadratic equations by factoring. Is that a yes? Is that a no? Uh, no in the sense that we should not? Yes, please. Yes, you were not here last time? OK, so I have a lot of things to give you. No, no, at the end. So I don't make, we make uh, anyone else, everyone else wait. So uh, we want to look at factoring or we don't want to look at factoring? Don't. You yes. don't? Yes. Okay, so from that handout, from that handout, the equations, let me show you the equations. So quadratic equations and solving them by factoring are here, uh, except this one, which is not quadratic because the degree is 3. Okay, in that case, I will suggest uh, B on this handout. I would suggest C on this handout um, and maybe one of the E or C, E or F, I'm sorry, or just those two. So I, I'm recommending B and C or another one if you'd like to pick another. We're going to solve them right now. Together, yes. Yes. Do you have another in mind? No. Okay. Ryan, anything else in mind here? No. Okay. Very good. This is the strategy of factoring that I highly recommend. So if you give me a, fact, a polynomial to factor, I will think in these terms. What does, does this mean? Okay. First, I am going to look at the polynomial and see whether the polynomial is in descending order. If it is not in descending order, I will rearrange it. If it is, I'll move on to the next step. I will factor out the greatest common factor. These two steps can go together. If the, neg if the leading coefficient is negative and there is a greatest common factor, I will factor out the greatest common factor and the negative leading coefficient together. The next step. Now, I, should, I will know if it has two terms, then I will follow these these requirements, or I should say these steps. If it's a trinomial, then I will follow this strategy. And if it's four terms or more, then I will only factor by grouping. So it depends on what I'm given. So coming back to our handout, and we let's say we chose B first. So, so this is factoring. We are talking about factoring for a few minutes. So I have x squared equals 100. So what do I do first? Yes, it's in descending order, but you're not. You're right. It doesn't have zero on one side. That's a requirement. Yes. So I have x squared, and then um, there is no need for that. I just rearrange what I have. I will not make up with a zero times x. If there is no need for that. But you're raising a very good point. So what do I do next then? Minus 
Awesome. Yes, that's all I wanted. Good. So now I'm looking at my strategy. The polynomial is in descending order. Greatest common factor, none. X squared and 100 have nothing in common. Negative leading coefficient, no. Which of these three, because it cannot be more than one, which one is the situation I'm referring to? Is it the first, the second, or the third? Of course, it's a binomial. Good. So I'm going to try to see if any of these formulas or special products works. So do you think that any of those will work? None of the ones you listed, but there is an method that will work. These are all possibilities. So if it's factorable, it's here. This this one, exactly, of course, the top one. This one is the only one that I listed, and this is not factorable using integers. But I have to list it because I talk about it in class. But this is the only one that is not factorable. All the other three are factorable. Okay, so how do I factor a squared minus 10, knowing that this is the difference of squares? Also... Also, we did talk about this, and that's the reason why I started the, the semester with this. Do you see it? Knowing the formula should trigger a memory, our memory go back to the factored form. So that's why we have an agreement, right? So bear with me. So how do I factor x squared minus 100? Very good. x minus 10 and x plus 10. That's the factor form using the difference of squares. Awesome. So now I will use the zero product principle. What does that mean? That there are how many options here? Two options. And you have the zero product principle on my handout. Principle of zero product and solving equations by factoring. The equation x times y equals zero is true if and only if either x is zero or y is zero. That's the zero product principle. So here we have two factors. We have this factor and we have this factor. If the first factor is zero, how much is x? Okay. If the second factor is zero, how much is x? negative 10. So we solved this equation by factoring. I should have asked you from the beginning, what is the degree of this polynomial? Two. How many solutions do we have to write? Two. Quadratic means two solutions. A polynomial degree two. Awesome. Let's also review with uh, 4x squared minus 18x equals 70. Before that, I'm going to ask you if you have any questions on the previous problem. Anything. Any questions on the previous one? Remember, it's not enough. I think I'm going to do this because sometimes it's confusing and... Um, I just want to reinforce what you need to do from class to class. I'm going to send out an email after each class during that day or the next day in the morning and say, this is what we did. This is what you're expected to prepare for next class. And I'm going to list what you are prepared, what you need to prepare. So there is no ambiguity. Okay? Because it may have not been very clear from the first time we met. So that I take responsibility for that. Okay, so what type of equation is this? How many solutions will we find? Two. Awesome. What will be the first step? The requirement is fact. Equals zero. Exactly. So 4x squared minus 18x. Plus 70 equals zero. Good. There are two key words in math, algebra or otherwise, that I mentioned, or maybe I didn't. So I'm going to write them here. Keywords. I'm going to ask you about this all the time. The two key words that I would like you to have in the back of your mind always are factor, simplify. So 
So in this case, before I factor, I am going to simplify the equation. I can only simplify an equation dividing both sides by any number, not the variable ever, not by x. Let's write that as a note. Never divide both sides of an equation by the variable. Or expressions that have the variable, like dividing by x plus 1 or dividing by x minus 3. Okay, So never divide both sides of an equation by the variable. It's not the case here. There are, these three terms don't have x in common anyway. But I wanted to have the note there. So the next step would be to divide by 2. So dividing both sides of an equation by a number that is not 0 is always allowed. It will not change the solutions, but it will make my life easier. I will have to deal with numbers that are smaller, and I want that. So I'll divide both sides by 2, and what do I get? And equals, yes, 0 divided by 2 is 0. Good. Now, I go back to my strategy, because I'm asked to factor. Is it in descending order? Yes. Factor, factor, greatest common factor? No, there is no common factor. I got rid of div by dividing both sides by 2 because this is an equation. I'm allowed to do that. Negative leading coefficient? No, the leading coefficient is 2. Very good. So now I have to decide, is it this, is it this, or is it this? Try. Exactly, it's this. This is the most difficult one. This is the easiest. This is the second easiest, and this is the bottom of the pool, the most difficult one. OK, so the first thing I do, I check these two. That's my first thought. Why? And that's why I, we have an agreement. So I have three terms now. I really hope for this or this, because then my task is done in a blink. It's not the case, but I would like to check. I have to check. This is a perfect square. Is this a perfect square? No. Is this a perfect square? No. So these two do not work. Now I'm looking at the next in line. I think, I think it's the third one. Uh, the fourth one, yes. So is the leading coefficient 1? No. 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 So this is the last chance where the leading coefficient is not 1. So. In that case, here's what we need to do. I'm trying to find two numbers, this number and this number, whose product is, in a second, and whose sum, the same two numbers, the sum is always this, the middle coefficient. Remember, this, is, this has to be in descending order. That's why this is the top requirement when factoring. So this is always the sum, the coefficient of x. But now the product, because the leading coefficient is not 1, the product must include it. Oops. This is the product. 2 times negative 35. So I'm trying to find, seven. Seven. I'm, I'm trying to find two numbers whose product is negative 70 and whose sum is negative 9. So first of all, let's analyze if the product of two numbers is negative. What type of numbers am I looking for? Two positives, two negatives. Awesome. So I have to have a positive and a negative because the product is negative 70. Are you with me? OK. So now let's try to find two numbers whose product is negative 70, whose sum is negative 9. So for 70, you can say 70 is a big number. OK, let's present it in prime numbers. 7 times 10, 2 times 5. So then 70 is 2 times 5 times 7. Can you group these three numbers using all, everything, into two numbers, one positive and one negative, whose sum will be negative 9? Yes? The sum is not negative 9. And we have to use all numbers to, to get the product of negative 7 times 
and the 5 is a one over one. So you're talking about 14 and 5, or negative 14 and 5. That I will agree. So negative 14 and 5 is good. So this is the 14 or negative 14, and this is the 5. Awesome. So is the product negative 70 or 5 of, uh, times negative 14? Of course, we used everything, all factors. So it is. Is the sum negative 9? Yep. It must be, right? Otherwise, I have to look for other numbers. Good. The next step is I will rewrite the equation using these numbers. I can change to x squared, but instead of negative 9x, I will use what? But x. Good. And then I copy the last one. Now, if you make the mistake to, of going backwards and combining like terms, you're not going to accomplish anything. You have, you have to group it into two binomials. Exactly. So now I'm back to my strategy. I have four terms. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to factor by grouping. Good. Look what I did. I refuse to look at the last two. They have to wait. From the first two, what do I factor out? X. Indeed. What is left in parentheses? 2x plus 5. Good. What do I have to have? n equals symbol, n0. Coming from the other two, I refuse to look at them yet. Mm. What has to be there? Because otherwise I can't continue. Say it again. That's your hint, of course. If, if these two are not the same, I can continue. So what do I have to have here? I have to write it, because who knows what I come up with. Right? Only now I look. I need a sign, and I need a factor. So it works, right? I cannot fabricate it. I'm not saying you did. I'm just make emphasize it. So negative 7 times 2x, is that this? Is negative 7 times 5 this? Good. So now I have two terms. So what do I pull out? X minus 7. Careful. I pull out. You're right. It's the same thing. I agree. But in order to explain what happens next, is it just, this becomes the common factor. I pull it out. And then I have indeed, as you said, x minus 7. You can write it as x minus 7 times 2x plus 5 or 2x plus 5 times x minus 7. It makes no difference. So now I have the x values. What are they? Yes, negative 5 halves, very good, and positive 7. It's a lot of work. Any questions? Any questions? The method of uh, taking square roots. It is a very useful method as long as um, the uh, equation is already set up for the method, like x squared equals 100. We just did that. We just did that, right? We just solved the equation by factoring. But now I'm going to do something else. I'm going to take square roots from both sides. Before we do that, I have to ask you how many solutions do we have to get? Two. Of course. So the square root of x squared, the correct step, the correct step here is the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. The square root of 100 is? 10. Good. So now I'm asking you, what should go in here such that the absolute value of x is 10? Well, either 10 or negative 10. Right. The absolute value of 10 is 10. The absolute value of negative 10 is 10, right? So x equals 10 and x equals negative 10. However, we omit this step. The reason why I show it is because I don't want you to think that the square root of 100 is 10 or negative 10. 
So the method says from here directly write x equals plus or minus 10. But just remember the square of 100 is not plus or minus 10. The square of 100 is only 10. The plus or minus come from this side, from the absolute value. Any questions? So from the other application, it's just 10, but for this, it's plus or minus. When you take the square root, you have to write plus or minus. Right. Because it's a quadratic equation, and you have to obtain two solutions. So you can say, OK, I don't care for the method here, because I will move 100. And you just showed us how to find the solutions fact by factoring. <coughs> True. However, if the equation is 2x plus 1 squared equals 16, I will not square 2x plus 1, move 16, and try something else. No. This is specific and typical for taking square roots. So I take square roots from both sides, and I write 2x plus 1 equals? No. Thank you. You cannot write plus or minus before the square root. Please don't do that. Sorry, I have to deduct points if you do that. Please don't do it. Because the plus or minus come from the left-hand side. They don't come from the right-hand side. Even if I'm showing my work and I don't put No, please don't put plus or minus here. You have to put them here. Please. You will not see something like this anywhere in any book because it's incorrect. What I put in my paper. It was an error. That's OK. Let's correct it now. Trust me. Good, so I move 1 to the other side, 2x equals negative 1 plus or minus 4. And of course, I divide by 2. I will have to separate the two solutions. Any questions? Any questions? Ryan, any questions? No OK, so negative 1 plus 4 over 2, and negative 1 minus 4 over 2. You may see something that I don't, that I like to so always feel free to ask any question, anytime. So then x equals uh, negative 5 halves, or x equals uh, 3 halves. So this is extremely useful here, this method. The third one, which is completing the square, As I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, it's not, I will never apply it myself. Unless you say, you can only solve by complete the square. Show me that you know the method. Then it's a different story. Otherwise, I will never use complete the square in solving a quadratic equation. So let's try and understand the method. So let's say I have x squared plus 6x uh, equals 8. And we are forced to use completing the square. So here's the question. Of course, everything is in descending order, because otherwise I can identify correctly, or I could, but we shouldn't attempt to identify the, the coefficients uh, if uh, the polynomial is not in descending order. OK, coming back to our agreement. So what this says is that we have this part, we have the plus, we have this term, but we don't have this term. So I'm looking for this term that I will need in order for these three terms to get changed into this. And that's how I complete the square. So if this term is x squared and this one is 6x, what do you think this one would be? so that I get this. Right. How, how do we know that this is the right number? Right. OK, so here's the, here are the steps towards completing the square. Steps. Number one, identify the middle coefficient. So what is the middle coefficient here? Awesome. Step number two, divided by two. 
Perfect. Step number three. Square three. Final step. Add nine to both sides. You understand that I cannot add nine to one side without adding into the other. Agreed? Okay, perfect. So then the new equation becomes x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 8 plus 9. I added 9 according to my calculations on these four steps. I added 9 to both sides. That's why I kindly asked you to refrain from foiling this because then going backwards will be difficult to understand. So that's why we did this on Monday. So then, now you please tell me what this left-hand side is. Very good. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, complete the square alone cannot solve any equation. So what do I do now? It's typical for what? For which method? Of course, we just did that a minute ago, right? Exactly, typical situation. Something with x squared and some number on the other side, positive or negative, or zero even. So then I have x plus 3 equals? 17. Nope. Plus or minus. Thank you. The square root of 17. It's quadratic. We expect two solutions. That's okay. We'll get used to it. So negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 17. Yes, please. Do you need me to read this? Is it okay? Complete the square. Last method. Quadratic formula. So in ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So we have to have, I'm looking at my video just one second. Let's see. Go to 52. 